Good day, everyone, and we want to welcome you to our devotion, weekly devotion, on our Transformed by the Word Scripture passage for the day. And today, we are exploring this passage or this chapter of the Bible that is Ezekiel chapter 10. And it's an interesting chapter. Several thoughts I have to share with you from this chapter. Well, the first one, maybe some context. It does speak about angels, cherubim, and all that. And number two, it also speaks about the glory of God departing from the temple, slowly easing, making its way out from the Holy of Holies to the threshold and then outside. So some thoughts, if you haven't read this, you ought to read this because it will really blow your minds on what the Bible describes to us. But here are some thoughts based on this chapter, Ezekiel chapter 10. But the very first is this, we truly worship an amazing God. And sometimes I think we may wonder about whether this God exists because we haven't seen Him fully. Maybe we've experienced Him, we've encountered Him, but we always wonder whether really God exists. I haven't seen Him in His fullness of His glory. And I think there's good reason for that. If you read the chapter and how the cherubims are and everything, I think God is really powerful. And if God were to show us the fullness of His glory, I don't think we humans in our current form will be able to understand or to contain that amazement that we will see from Him. We will bow down in reverence and maybe also in fright. So I think it's for our good that God withholds the fullness of His glory for us. But number two, it tells me also, this chapter tells me also that we serve a God where really there are things going on in the invisible realm that we can't see and also we will find difficult to fathom. Just for example, the cherubims are described for us in this chapter of Ezekiel. Just reading for some verses for you. Verse 9, I looked and there were four wheels beside the cherubim. And this is just after the verse 8 where it says that the cherubim appeared to have the form of human hands under the wings. Now just imagine that. There were wings and human hands under it. And that's his form. Or that's its form. And in verse 9, there were wheels beside it. Four wheels beside the cherubim. One wheel beside each cherub. The luster of the wheels was like the gleam of beryl. And it says, in appearance, verse 10, all four looked alike, like a wheel within a wheel. Hands, wings, wheel within a wheel. And then they all turn and face at the same time. Verse 12, the entire bodies, including the backs, hands, wings, and the wheels that the four of them had were full of eyes all around. What kind of creature is that? Full of eyes all around. Now, this is my point too. There really are things going on in the invisible that we can't see, can't fathom, can't comprehend. And again, if God were to allow us, and this is going beyond Him showing us the fullness of His glory, but if God were to allow us to see everything that's surrounding Him in the heavenly places, I think also we will fall down in fright. Some things we are not yet meant to see and experience. But the third point is something that I mentioned earlier in giving the context and God's glory departing. Just as we can't see God's glory in His fullness, we can't see all this cherubim and all that, the amazing forms they take. We also won't be able to see the glory of God when it departs from us or the ministries or the organizations that we are in. And so this is the biggest lesson the biggest truth I will take away for myself. Will I be able to have this temple be a dwelling place for Him? Can I live my life in such a way that God will have no reason to have His glory depart from this temple of the Holy Spirit? It brings me to a point of reflection on how I'm living my life and whether it is something that God finds pleasing. Because the last thing I want is for this God of full of glory fullness in everything and everything that I can't see to slowly depart without me even realizing it. And I pray God will open all of our eyes to sense, to hear, to know when there are things that are displeasing to Him in our lives so that God's glory will always be with us. But before I end, 
don't want to leave you on a note being all frightful and scared that God will leave us. Even though this chapter does speak of God's glory departing, in time to come, God does restore that relationship and His glory does come back. It's something that speaks about God's grace to us. But may we never take His grace for granted. May we be quick to repent, to turn our ways around, that God's glory and His presence will always be with us. Please join me in prayer. So Father, I thank you for Ezekiel chapter 10. I thank you for all the amazing things that are spoken about inside. Lord, we know that we can't see all these things, but that doesn't mean that it does not exist. So Father, we trust that in your time, in your place, when you feel that it's right and well, then we will get to experience some of these things. But till then, Lord, may we live in obedience, in faithfulness, such that our lives will always be a place where your glory can descend upon and dwell in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all.